think about what's going to happen when we hook up this scan tool to the blazer. Think what's going to happen when I give it throttle. And we'll see if your hypothesis is correct. Well, I wanted to do this live, but um, it's just easier to not talk over the engine and just get the data first quickly so I can get my garage door closed as soon as possible again. But this is the data that we got. This top graph here is the throttle position sensor. Basically, that's me uh, goosing the throttle and in some cases going to wide open throttle here. And then on the bottom is our bank one and bank two long-term fuel trim numbers. And I don't know about you, but I think this uh, looks exactly like I would expect it to. It looked a lot like that one Toyota in the previous scenes. So what's happening is every time I'm hitting the throttle, you can see that there is a screaming response for fuel trim. Maybe not as bad as that Toyota, but uh, again, I expect a code would be set probably um, at 20, certainly over 25, no question. And this explains the hesitation and acceleration problems because every time the throttle is being hit, not enough fuel is being sent to meet the demand. We know now for absolute certain, combined with the low fuel pressure, that this is a fuel delivery problem, no doubt about it. If it were not for the low fuel pressure, then this could be some other things. Not a vacuum leak though, again, because notice whenever I'm laying off, the throttle that I don't have the high demand for fuel. So it's, it's not a vacuum leak. And incidentally, if you have a scan tool that doesn't give this long-term fuel, tr fuel trim data, but it does give oxygen sensor live data, you can do the same thing. When an oxygen sensor is in a lean condition, the voltage will drop down to 0.1 or 0.2 volts. And in a rich condition, the voltage on an oxygen sensor increases to 0 0.8, 0 0.9 volts. So what you would have seen if this were oxygen sensor data is whenever you hit the throttle, you would have seen the oxygen sensors reading lean, especially at wide open throttle. You would have really seen them go lean. They really should go rich at wide open throttle. So that would also be an indication fuel delivery problem. So based on all this data, it's time to really start examining the fuel system. You know, I forgot one important thing. If you do not have the capability to do all that stuff with the scan tool, you can actually replicate that data using the fuel pressure gauge while the engine is running. And I'm sorry, I forgot to show this earlier, but um, what this clip is going to show is it's going to show the engine running. You'll notice that the fuel pressure is still way below spec, but it's a little higher than the key on engine off position of 35. But notice as I'm hitting the throttle, you'll hear the stumbling, but also watch the gauge. You'll see the gauge dropping in correlation with what we saw on the scan tool data. So this is a way that you can validate some type of fuel delivery issue. Remember, it doesn't necessarily mean the fuel pump is bad, but this does definitely indicate a fuel delivery issue similar to what the scan tool did. So go ahead and take a look and a listen, especially at the start of the video, you'll hear the, the stumbling really bad. Hopefully, a filter or restriction problem. Bad fuel filter would also uh, explain this. I, you always see that in troubleshooting charts and everything. I've never seen a bad fuel filter, so that's why I'm kind of not so hopeful about that. But boy, I, I sure hope it is a bad fuel filter because uh, it would be a, a very cheap fix and I know that my friend is not rich. Ha, get it? Not rich? <laughs> All right, other possibility could be um, an electrical issue at, at the fuel pump, not enough voltage getting there, causing the pump to be weak. Uh, we could have a bad regulator problem. Uh, there could be an internal leak somewhere in the system. Somebody's trying to call me. And uh, I, that's about it. Now, there's one other one that I'm thinking of, too. See if you guys think of this as well, because uh, this would be a disaster if this turned out to be the case. And that is um, my tester gauge could be bad. And this, all of this is riding on the fact 
that I'm reading 35 or 30 PSI on my fuel gauge. What if my fuel gauge is bad? Um, then all of this is for naught. So, and wouldn't that be awful to drop the tank and replace a pump if we decide that's what it is? And then uh, it turns out my gauge is bad. So before I do anything else, let's just check real quick um, by testing the gauge on a, another car and make sure that the gauge is reading accurately. All right, well, that's all I need to see. The gauge definitely works, so let's take that off the list. All right, so we've uh, tested that the gauge is working, so we can take that off the list. Oh, by the way, off the point real quick. Um, I know a lot of you guys, if you're familiar with computer diagnostics, or especially if you're like a, a professional technician, I don't know why you'd be watching me if, if you're that. But um, the question would be, why go through all of that computer stuff when you already know that the fuel pressure is low. You've already found the problem. And, and that's true. Um, what I'm trying to do is show you uh, guys, if, if you're new to this, how you would identify a low fuel pressure possibility so that you would know to use the gauge. So basically I'm working backwards here. Obviously if I know that the fuel pressure is already low, the scan tool is not going to help me in any way of diagnosing why it's low. The idea is um, I just serendipitously found in a previous repair that the fuel pressure was low. Most of the time, if you have drivability issue, you have no idea if it's from low fuel pressure, vacuum leak, whatever. So you hook up your scan tool. And basically, if you see the results that we saw with knowing that it's a low fuel pressure issue, then that would allow you to say, hmm, I should do fuel pressure next. So, so that's kind of the thing. Obviously, if you know you've got low fuel pressure, there's no point hooking up a scan tool. But that, that's kind of the strategy there. Anyway, let's get back here. Um, the uh, pump, we, we may have that problem here, but we always want to start with the easiest and most likely first. One of the things is to eliminate any kind of internal leak at the regulator, at an injector, something like that. The reason is because, remember, we um, did do a leak test, which we'll do again in case you didn't see that previous video. But in the earlier video, we did do a leak test. That wasn't the problem. Don't forget also we found a shorted injector in the body of the spider injection and replaced the spider injection system. So the idea that there's a regulator problem or a leak in the fuel injector, unlikely. Um, actually, it's impossible because before installing the spider system, I did test for that. That means also the regulator is not going to be a problem. So we are down to these three possibilities, uh, fuel pump issue, uh, maybe an electrical issue with the fuel pump, or some type of restriction in the system. Which of those do you think is going to be easiest? Uh, certainly a filter. So. Um, because the filter is only like 10 bucks, um, there, there is definitely an argument here to go against my usual grain of not replacing parts as a diagnosis. But at only $10 and the fact that the only way I can think of to test a fuel filter would be to tee in between the tank and the fuel filter. And I'm not sure that I have the means to do that. I'll have to see. But at only 10 bucks and the fact that it's much faster to just change the filter than to test it, there's definitely a rational argument. Just change the fuel filter. Um, because I don't feel like driving to the store right now because it's freezing outside, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can somehow tap in and test the filter and not only save 10 bucks but also save a trip as well. So that's where we're going next. We're going to see if we can find evidence of a fuel filter or some type of restriction. All right, so this didn't turn out to be so bad after all. What I did was I uh, tied into the inlet for the fuel filter, and then I don't even have to actually tee in really, but if I uh, follow along here, it turns out my extremely cheapo little fuel filter gauge here from Harbor Freight had everything I needed to tie in, and uh, I'm not going to tee in to the um, filter. What this will do is sufficiently allow me to do what I want and that is to measure the pressure before the fuel filter and that will tell me if this is an issue uh, with something from the tank up to the fuel filter or something uh, uh, considerably more involved. So let's go ahead and get all these lights out of here and everything and I'm going to go ahead and try this out. Hopefully this gauge will stay put while we do this but I'm going to go ahead and test our fuel pressure from the tank. All 
All right, let's see what we got here. That worked pretty well. Well, look at that, right about 35 again. I'm gonna go ahead and give a benefit of the doubt because the gauge was, of course, empty and maybe didn't give an accurate reading because it wasn't full with fuel, so let's try this again. And still right about 35. So this is 100% confirmation that our low fuel pressure problem has nothing to do with the filter, so I saved 10 bucks. And this is uh, bad news though, because it looks like this is gonna get a little more involved and it's certainly pointing more to a fuel pump, isn't it? So our problem is between the fuel pump and the filter at this point. So let's go back to our diagram and see what we can cross off. We are inching ever closer to a result that is going to suck, I think. But um, one of the things, by the way, in the previous scene with the fuel gauge, did you notice that the fuel gauge held pretty steady for a minute or so at 35? And that's one of the things that may not happen for you if you are doing a fuel pressure test. If you notice that the gauge really starts dropping pretty quickly, that is an indication that you have a leak in the system, an injector leak, a regulator leak, a check valve leak in the pump, something like that. But that is an indication you do have a leak, which could be the explanation actually it's certainly the explanation of your low fuel pressure notice that the gauge held steady there it is not a leak problem we are down to one of three possibilities actually the pump is bad an electrical issue or some type of restriction between the pump and where I hooked up the gauge. That is very, very, very unlikely. So really we're down to a pump or electrical problem. I really don't want to drop this fuel tank uh, in my home garage here. So we're going to go after electrical next because it's safer. It turns out that if you take out the rear tire uh, from under the car and jack it up high enough, you can actually sit on the floor comfortably under the car and get a pretty good look at the top of the fuel tank there. And uh, that's going to make life a lot easier for me because now, based on what I see, there are two connectors here. There's one and two. And what I'm thinking I want to do is a voltage drop test. So what I need to do to do a voltage drop test, which will tell me whether there's high resistance in the circuit to the fuel pump, and because I'm able to reach these, I can actually do this at the pump, which is precisely what I want to do. That will conclusively end my testing and decide whether I have electrical or a fuel pump issue. And uh, what I need to do is find where my negative and positive terminals are to drive the fuel pump. And without a wiring diagram, I'm just gonna have to poke around until I find them. Uh, this connector here is not of interest to me because I can look at that and that looks like it must be from the sending unit or something. I don't think that's gonna have power feed. This connector I'm strangely attracted to. And I just realized I'm right by my garage door so my butt is like literally, I think, frozen to the floor. So I have all kinds of time now. And I'm trying to see the color of these wires but it's real dirty. And there is, well, there's a purple one, so I'm not too interested in that. I'm pretty confident that's going to go up to the control panel. But next to it is a definite black wire. And I like that one because I think that's going to be the negative. And over here across from the purple is a gray wire. And I'm liking that one because I'm thinking that's going to be the positive. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, probe these and see if I'm correct on that. And even if, if I've got them backwards, that's fine. But I do need to determine the polarity on the power supply in order to do my voltage drop test. So that's the next step is to find out where they are on this connector. All right, that looks like it should be a pretty good picture. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the fuel pump to on and we'll see if I've got the voltage right. All right, well, was that awesome or what? So we are well on our way to finally finding out what for sure we're going to have to do to fix this car. So the next step is, now that I know my polarities, I need to do a voltage drop test.